What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys an overview of the Android P developer preview number three. Now they just dropped the uh, OTA images, the factory images, and the actual OTA just started being pushed for those that are enrolled in the Android developer beta program. Now I wanna go ahead and show you guys really quick the build number and one of the very first changes here, which is actually that Android P is indeed Android 9. This is the first time we've seen a reference to the official number version of Android. So it is going to be Android 9. And then also here, of course, in the settings, you can see right there, the build number there, PPP3, and then the various pieces of the build number. So if you do want to install the Android P developer preview three beta, I will drop a link below from where you can enroll in the beta program with your eligible Pixel device. Some of the other devices which were launched at Google I.O. like the Xperia X-T2, those should follow shortly. So as I mentioned, the first change really is that Android P is Android 9. There is no new Easter egg, it's the same colored Android P logo that we've seen from the beginning, but there are some really important changes that people will be interested in. Perhaps the most important first change that a lot of people complained about in the very first preview for the beta release at Google I.O. was the clear all was disappearing from recent apps. The clear all is now back. So you can now clear all of your apps just by scrolling to the side. It is a little bit of a pain, but it's always sort of been that way on a lot of devices. You have to scroll through horizontally through all of your apps and then get here right to the side and then you can clear all. So that's something a lot of people were disappointed about. That returns in this version as well. So one of the other things is the navigation gestures. So navigation gestures were introduced with the beta released at Google I.O. You swipe up, you get your recent apps here, which of course you can scroll through. You can do a lot of cool stuff like copying and pasting text from one app to another, which is a really nice feature with the navigation gestures. And then you can also swipe up again to get into your app drawer. Now, a lot of people complained with the beta 2 release at Google I.O. that the gesture to go from the recent apps up into the navigation drawer was not very smooth. Well, that's been made a lot more smooth here with the developer preview three. It's now very easy and intuitive to sort of go right into your app drawer. They've also made it very obvious that you can actually go another level. You see here when you swipe to get into the recent apps, down here at the very bottom, you've now got the Google search bar. You've got sort of a tented little window there at the bottom. There's a little bit of tenting and you've got your recent apps right below. Swipe up again to get into your app drawer. In addition, they've added haptic feedback. When you swipe up to get right into your recent apps, you'll feel some haptic feedback. In addition to uh, if you're scrolling along using the swipe gesture, so you can still swipe to the right to just quickly go between apps. If you wanna go from one app to another, switch back and forth. This has also been made much more smooth, uh, so that haptic feedback feels a little bit better. It's also a lot smoother, no drop frames or anything like that, which is something I was experiencing on the second developer preview, which was the first beta from Google I.O. So they've made a few improvements here to the gestures, a little smoother, a little bit easier to get into the app drawer. It's also a little more obvious sort of that there's something going on here to new users. I still would like to see a swipe to the left to go back. We still got the back button there. So it hasn't been improved, you know, overall in a really huge way, but it's definitely some incremental improvements there. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the color picker uh, within the display menu. So if you go into display and you go down to advanced, if you go into colors here, this color picker, you used to have the three modes there, natural, boosted, and saturated, but now Google has done something which a lot of other manufacturers have done. They've added a photo here so that you can go ahead and take a look at what the different color modes are going to look like on your display. I've been running saturated mainly because I use like Galaxy S9 Plus side by side with my Pixel 2 XL. It just looks a little more consistent. I know some people don't like saturated colors, but that's definitely a small change they've added that does improve sort of the functionality of this menu. Uh, another thing is when you turn on the do not disturb mode, uh, you'll see here at the top it says phone muted. When you turn on do not disturb mode, there's actually a little prompt that pops up and tells you how you can handle do not disturb. 
I took a screenshot because it's only happened the first time you do it. It says, update, do not disturb. Your phone can do more to help you focus. Update settings to hide notifications completely and allow calls from starred contacts and repeat callers. So this appears to be a little different than the way it was on the second preview. Uh, they had it set so that all of your notifications were automatically blocked. Here you get an option of whether or not you want to update to that or not. And if you do choose to update to that, you can go into settings and it'll be right under do not disturb, which is in sound. And then there's lots of options here that you can change. So they're just set to partially hidden here, which you can change all those options in the custom restrictions. Uh, if you want to show or hide all notifications, you can do that as well within the do not disturb settings. But at least Google is now giving you sort of an option to see that. Another thing that was updated in this version of Android are the emoji. So there's actually 157 new emoji. Some of the ones that have been improved here, you got the grasshopper, the turtle, they've been made to look a little more lifelike uh, overall. A lot of the various emoji, a salad emoji, quite a few bacon I think was changed as well. Overall, 157 new emoji added uh, to update and to look a little bit better for you. So that's not a huge thing. It doesn't matter to me too much, but I know some people care a lot about emoji and for them, that will certainly be a big deal. Moving on to just a couple of small other things. You guys probably noticed that here, the date appears under the time in your notification tray. They also made another small change, which is that they renamed the download app again back to files. That's not obviously a functional change, but just something that I noticed. Perhaps some of the things that are interesting are the things that have not changed in this version. There is no digital health option, digital well-being option, which they talked a lot about at Google I.O. The menu to monitor your phone's usage and how much time you're spending in certain apps is not available here, along with the app restriction limit. So I guess we're going to get that in developer preview 4, or it might not even come till the stable release. So that's a little disappointing to see that option not available. That's probably the biggest glaring omission. They did improve, again, the gestures, but there's still probably quite a bit of a ways to go there. Uh, a few other things, they also allow you now to do quick replies from bundled notifications. I don't have any here currently, but you can now reply if you have a whole bunch of notifications bundled together like in Gmail or Hangouts. There's a little quick reply button right there. I think that's about all I've seen so far. If I notice anything else, I'll make an update video also talking about battery life on this version in a couple days. Hope you guys enjoyed my overview. If you have any questions or comments about Android P Developer Preview 3, if you guys notice anything else, drop me a comment below. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.